<laughs> in the name of Jesus. Anyone have any uh, prayer requests or testimonies they want to share tonight? Guess I can start with an update on my dad. <laughs> we spent an interesting Saturday night at the emergency room. Um, he fell after dinner Saturday night and landed flat on his side and broke his arm. And we went home and he was fine. You know how stubborn you boys can be. Fine. And about an hour later, he wasn't fine anymore. <laughs> and so we uh, left for the emergency room about 10 o'clock Saturday night. And um, it was a long night, but they took the x-ray, said it was broken. And sent him home in a sling and said to go see a specialist. And so we went to the specialist today. And I was telling Mike, the emergency room doctor made it sound like there were bone fragments. And I was expecting some big, huge, massive break. And they put the x-ray up. And I'm like, where's the break? I don't see anything. So no cast, just in the sling, and yeah, so he's not going to hurt himself if he has to use it a little bit because it's his right hand, and so how many of you know when that's your primary hand, it's a little tough to take care of yourself, so just uh, remember him in prayers. He's home during the day by himself, makes me nervous, I'm a little bit of mama bear with my dad, yeah. <laughs> so it makes me a little nervous, um, but yeah, just remember Frank, so as he heals, as the Lord finishes his healing work in him. So, yeah, I didn't get to see the break on Saturday, so I don't know if the Lord just did what he did, yeah. and it was already on the way to being healed, or well, that made it sound pretty bad. So I was like, well, that's it. I don't even see anything. <laughs> so praise the Lord. Anybody else tonight? Any prayer requests or any testimonies? Yeah, I saw that. He was a soldier for the kingdom for many, many, many years. He ran a good race. And that's, that's our, all of our goal, right, at the end, to say we ran a good race. Gave it all that we had while we were here. You know? Yeah, Tim. And I still want to remember the families, you know, all the tragedy and stuff. You know, and when you even talk about it to your kids or talk about people, mm -hmm. there's a lot of lies in that whole thing. And, and, and I, I tell them a lot of times, you know, heaven's the only place all the answers. Down here, you're not going to get them all. Because some things mm -hmm. never make sense. You, know, you, you see the people on TV and how anxious they are. You know, and, and, and it won't make sense. You know, you have these good kids that was trying to do something in their life and their life is gone. You know, and, and, and they end up asking God a lot of wise, You know, mm -hmm. and, and I understand. Sometimes you just don't uh, answer, to yeah. them, but you can be there for them and, and say, We'll pray with you. And let them know that you know what you know. God's still on the throne, no matter what. Right. You know, and, and uh, sometimes you just gotta really. It's gonna take time and prayer uh, to get you through it. You know, and, and learn to just trust God in those difficult situations. Mm -hmm. You know, so we just continue to ask prayer for that. Yeah, and then from all those families, all those kids. It's a real opportunity for those kids who are reaching out and their hearts are tender. I don't know how good God is in the midst of tragedy. Okay. Amen. For the word, come forth. Amen. And power. Yes. Birdie told me Pastor will be having a birthday in the next week, too. I think he's trying to skip it, but I don't know that his pastor's wife's going to let him. Yeah. <laughs> so, I don't know. Yeah. Uh, I don't remember if it was Saturday or Sunday. Yeah. It's, it's close, but I'm not sure exactly. Sorry, tell me. I think so. Yeah, I know. <laughs> well, Sally. Yeah. 
Yeah. So, anyone else? So let's just stand and go to the Lord tonight. Any prayer requests or testimony? Let's just jump right in. Yeah. Sure. so thankful to be gathered tonight in your house, this house of prayer. Gathered together to lift up our needs to you, Lord. To speak our needs to one another, to be remembered and lifted up, Lord. I ask you to touch my dad, Frank. Your healing power, Lord, in that arm, Lord. For the children, the families suffering in Florida, Lord, from the loss, the tragedy, the loss of young lives. For James's friend, Lord. Jesus. For Pastor and Sally as they take some time away, Lord, be with them. Surround them, Lord. Encourage them. Fill their cup, Lord, as they spend some time. Refreshing, Lord. Pray for Holly's family, Lord. For peace in the storm, Lord. We speak peace to the storms, Lord. And that those ties of bitterness and resentment be broken, Lord. And that the love of family be restored, Lord. That you heal the hidden hurts in the heart that make people act as they would not ever want to act. And that you reconcile every member of that family one to another in love and peace. And give them strength to do the tasks that are needed to prepare the house, to prepare a place for Holly's mother, Lord. Jesus, and tonight we pray for this service, Lord. We've come expecting, Lord. We've come ready to be filled as we continue to pour out all that you give, Lord. Jesus, as you bring forth the word tonight and power, and that the truth would rise up and set your captives free, Lord. Yes. That our minds would be renewed by the hearing of your word. Yes. And as we worship and lift you up, come as you do, Lord, and receive our sacrifice of praise. And tonight, Lord, we remember Billy Graham, who was a soldier in your army for many years, Lord, who poured out all that he was and all that he had and who worked to finish the work that you set before him, Lord. Let us let him be an example to all of us to focus on the work that you have set for each of us to do, to be the light in the darkness, to be salt in a flavorless world, to speak the name of Jesus boldly, to proclaim the good news of your gospel everywhere so that no one can say they didn't know that no one told them of your goodness, of your grace and your mercy for whosoever will, for anyone, us imperfect, fallen creatures, to become one with you, our creator and our God, and live as a new creation, emboldened by the power of your Holy Spirit that becomes one with us, to blaze a trail in the darkness, 
forgiveness of truth and life and peace and grace. Lord, this world struggles in darkness and asks why. Why the hatred? Why the anger? Why the death? Why the suffering? We live in a fallen world, but you told us in this world we will have tribulation. But have no fear, for I have overcome the world. When we turn to you, Jesus, when we turn to put our eyes upon you, when we choose to speak your word on our lips, when we choose to let go of all of the ways of this world and try to pull us and drag us behind, when we let it go and we run after you and we run the race that you have set for us, we will be victorious and we will have an abundant life as you have promised. And greater things than what you did shall we do. Let it be so, Lord. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. You're so good, Lord. So good. Just a reminder that you brought a cell phone tonight to silence it till the end of the service. And anybody interested in helping in the sound booth? Uh, Michael is looking for help with the sound board. And that is all I have. So, Ron, you want to please come and take an offering tonight?
การขอบคุณมากนะคะที่ทำให้เราได้มีความสุขมากขึ้นมีความสุขมากขึ้นมีความสุขมากขึ้นมีความสุขมากขึ้นมีความสุขมากขึ้นมีความสุขมากขึ้นมีความสุขมากขึ้นมีความสุขมากขึ้นมีความสุขมากขึ้นมีความสุขมากขึ้นมีความสุขมากขึ้นมีความสุขมากขึ้นมีความสุขมากขึ้นมีความสุขมากขึ้นมีความสุขมากขึ้นมีความสุขมากขึ้นมีความสุขมากขึ้นมีความสุขมากขึ้นมีความสุขมากขึ้นมีความสุขมากขึ้นมีความสุขมากขึ้นมีความสุขมากขึ้นมีความสุขมากขึ้นมีความสุขมากขึ้นมีความสุขมากขึ้นมีความสุขมากขึ้นมีความสุขมากขึ้นมีความสุขมากขึ้นมีความสุขมากขึ้นมีความสุขมากขึ้นมีความสุขมากขึ้นมีความสุขมากขึ้นมีความสุขมากขึ้นมีความสุขมากขึ้นมีความสุขมากขึ้นมีความสุขมากขึ้นมีความสุขมากขึ้นมีความสุขมากขึ้นมีความสุขมากขึ้นมีความสุขมากขึ้นมีความสุขมากขึ้นมีความสุขมากขึ้นมีความสุขมากขึ้นมีความสุขมากขึ้นมีความสุขมากขึ้นมีความสุขมากขึ้นมีความสุขมากขึ้นมีความสุขมากขึ้นมีความสุขมากขึ้นม
So this land, as he describes, flowing with milk and honey, the Bible compares the word of God as honey, where David writes in Psalms 119, 103, He says, How sweet are your words to my taste, sweeter than honey to my mouth. Psalms 19, 10 through 11. David also writes, More to be desired are they than gold, even much fine gold, sweeter also than honey and drippings of the honeycomb. And by them is your servant warned, in keeping them there is great reward. That was out of the uh, New American Standard Bible, sorry. It's not probably going right along with King James. But. And Psalms 81, 16. David writes that by God's word, he would feed you with the finest of the wheat, and with honey from the rock I would satisfy you. Ezekiel 3.3. 3. And Ezekiel was once told by God, Son of man, feed your belly with this scroll that I give you, and fill your stomach with it. Then I ate it, and it was in my mouth as sweet as honey. So in, it, so in many places, the word of God is spoken of as honey, which is both sweet and nutritious. Peter uses the word milk in a positive way when he wrote in 1 Peter Two, two through three. It says, like newborn babies, long for the pure milk of the word, so that by it you may grow in respect to salvation if you have tasted the kindness of the Lord. So milk and honey are generally used in a positive sense most of the time when they are typically referring to feeding on the word of God. Today, I believe our land flowing with milk and honey, which was physical land to the children of Israel in the Old Testament. But for this day is found in the person Jesus. He is the word of God. The word became flesh and dwelt among us. Now he is in us. Think about this. Adam was created from the dust of the earth. So his body is land. God breathed the breath of life into Adam. So the Holy Spirit at that moment possessed the land. If you are a saved Christian, the Holy Spirit has possessed your land. Just as I stated that milk and honey refers to feeding on the word of God, we are to feed off of Jesus, the word. The flow of milk and honey is in you. God's grace and rest are to the believer under the new covenant. That is where your inheritance is today. God wants to bring you out of lack and into your land of abundance. He wants to bring you out of sickness into robust health. And this promised land is the place of his rest. In Luke 17, 21. Thank you, Lord. Luke 17, 21. It says... It describes the kingdom of God as this, Neither shall they say, Lo here or lo there, for behold, the kingdom of God is within you. So all the resources we'll ever need are already within us. So how do we obtain them? I believe it's a matter of resting in the things he has already done for you and putting your trust in the finished work of the cross. Resting in the word when the doctor comes with a bad report. Resting in the word when unexpected bills come up. Resting in your land that flows with milk and honey because God has already gone before you and claimed the victory. In Exodus 14:14, 14, 14, I'm going to read out of the New American Standard Bible again. It tells us that the Lord will fight for you while you keep silent. The Amplified says it like this. The Lord will fight for you and you shall hold your peace and remain at rest. So the way that we show God that we trust him is by entering into his rest. Hebrews 4, 9 through 11. Hebrews 4, 9 through 11. 
It says, There remaineth therefore a rest to the people of God. For he that is entered into his rest, he has also hath ceased from his own works, as God did from his. Let us labor therefore to enter into that rest, lest any man fall after the same example of unbelief. So Hebrews tells us to only labor in one thing, to enter into his rest, to enjoy the fruits and the pleasures of the land flowing with milk and honey. We are not to labor against the world, our circumstances, or even the enemy. As Nathan has said, and as I believe, the enemy is no competition for us. He was defeated and he was disarmed when Christ declared it is finished. So in Colossians 2.15 it says, tells us this. And having spoiled principalities and powers, he made show of them openly, triumphing over them in it. In what exactly? In dying on the cross. He spoiled principalities and powers. He diminished and he destroyed the enemy. I read this um, interesting piece that I want to share, and it talked about that in biblical times, defeated enemies were brought back in chains and the victorious king would sit on his throne and put his feet on the backs of his defeated enemy as a sign of victory. So likewise, Jesus' conquered enemies are being dragged to him one by one and put under his feet. God is telling us to have the same throne attitude as Jesus, to rest while he makes our enemies our footstool. Ephesians 1 20 through 23. And again, this is out of the New American Standard. Ephesians 1, 20 through 23. It says, Which he brought about in Christ when he raised him from the dead and seated him at his right hand in heavenly places, far above all rule and authority and power and dominion and every name that is named, not only in this age, but also in the one to come. And he put all things in subjection under his feet and gave him as head over all things to the church, which is his body, the fullness of him who fills all in all. So we all know the Lord is not wringing his hands. He's not wondering what's going to happen next. We just read that Jesus is seated at the right hand of the Father in heavenly places. He's seated. He ceased from work or movement in order to relax. You are seated with him. If you and the Lord are one, you are seated in heavenly places in Christ Jesus. Thank you, God, the Lord. So it also goes to show in Ephesians that the devil does not have any power over the children of God. The scripture said he put all things in subjection under his feet. Are you one with God? Everything has been placed under your feet. Everything is settled in heaven. The worry, the fear, the lack, it has all been settled. Those things have been stripped from authority and placed under our feet. So when we allow those things to crop up, worry, fear, doubt, we're allowing ourselves to go into unsettled territory. And that is not where God wants you. He wants you trusting in him from a restful heart, knowing that what he said he would do for you, he'll do it. And I know we've been hearing this over and over and over again, but we are obviously still allowing the liar to come in and to continue to steal from us in areas. Otherwise, we would not be hearing the same message over and over again. Some days I think to myself and it's like, why am I still trying to, like I have to achieve something? My mind, the enemy, they lie to me sometimes and try to make me believe that I still have to hit this mark. I've already hit the mark. I've already hit the main mark because I have Jesus as my Lord and Savior. You have, your, have Jesus as your Lord and Savior, so there is no more to do. We cannot continue to let the enemy or the world tell us who we are. You were bought with a precious price. You were ransomed for glory, the apple of God's eye. The thing we have to do is change our mindset. Don't allow your mind to labor against the truth. Romans 8, 7, this is King James, 8, 7. It says, because the carnal mind is enmity against God, for it's not subject to the law of God, neither indeed can it be. So this 
Carnal mind is at enmity with God, meaning the carnal mind is opposed or in conflict with God. So let's just think about that. So if you walk back through your day today in your mind or even your week, I want to take you back to something that's already done, but just take a trip on your day in your mind. Was there a moment that a false accusation or condemnation came your way? And how did we respond? Or how did you respond? Did you allow yourself to meddle in the accusation and allow it to snowball? Or did we immediately replace it with the Word of God? For instance, so for me, the other night I was laying in bed. And my son and his girlfriend and their family in June are going to Mexico. And he's 21 now, so he's not a child anymore. But as I was laying in bed, these thoughts came to my mind. And they were negative thoughts. And they started bouncing around about them being in a, another country, the world the way it is. You know how we let it get. And before I knew it, one hour had passed. So this is me laying in bed, midnight, whatever time it was. I let an hour pass with that going to my mind. And that lies the problem. So instead of me immediately replacing those thoughts about my son and his girlfriend with the word of God, as in with favor, Lord, you will surround them as with the shield for you bless the righteous or no weapon that is formed against my children will prosper. I let the negative stuff snowball. And that is not a restful or relaxed place. It's not. It keeps you up for an hour. And that's just one instance. So we have to quit. I have to quit letting this liar take me down a path that doesn't exist or to take me back to something that I've already been forgiven of. Quit allowing him to toss us to and fro. Instead of allowing negative thoughts to snowball, we need to dig our heels in when accusations come and let the devil know that as Jesus is, so are we in the world. That's been my go-to scripture these days. As he is, so am I in the world. My body hurts as, my, as his body is, so is mine in this world. The enemy has to flee when you start telling him who we are. So we can't allow him to rob from us. It's the head, the mind, is the place where you get robbed. I've said this before. When you start to have condemnation, worry, fear... When it comes to your mind, we need to picture the thorns that were placed on Christ's head. Pierce your mindset with the Word of God. It's important. Otherwise, God wouldn't be revealing this constant message of resting. The devil is defeated. Tear down the strongholds. Grace is enough. It wouldn't be a constant message if we were doing these things. And I'm not saying this about you. I'm saying it about me more than anything. It's like I can't let this continue to go on and expect the good things every time to happen. Like Jesus went up to people immediately. Their arms were healed. Their eyes were blind eyes were open. It's like I want to, I want to get there. And so these are the things I'm striving for. So we have to set everything aside. We have to set our rights from our wrongs, our shortcomings. Just set them aside. A couple Sundays ago, I also shared that when we place ourselves up under rights and wrongs, shortcomings, we are placing ourselves up under law mentality, rules, regulations. Again, I'm not saying those things, the laws, the rules, the regulations are not true or they're not real. But what I am saying is when you place yourself up under those obligations, you are laboring against something God has already rescued us from. And when you do this, you fall from grace. And just to prove that, let's read Galatians 5.4. Galatians 5, 4. Christ has become of no effect unto you. Whosoever of you are justified by the law, you are fallen from grace. The Amplified says it like this. You have been severed from Christ if you seek to be justified. That is declared free of guilt of sin and its penalty and placed in right standing with God through the law. You have fallen from grace for you have lost your grasp on God's unmerited favor and blessing. So God says we are not saved by our works, but we are saved by his grace. So let's just think for a moment on the story of Mary and Martha. So I shared this in another teaching during a woman's conference. Some of you might have heard this before, but I want to reiterate the two mentalities 
or the two beliefs that God is trying to get across in this message. So when Jesus was in the home of the two sisters, Martha and Mary, Martha was busy with much serving. Mary, on the other hand, was seated at Jesus' feet, listening to his words. After a while, Martha got angry and said to Jesus in Luke 10, 40, Martha said, Lord, do you not care that my sister has left me to serve alone? Therefore, tell her to help me. So Martha was in work mode. And as we know it, when we are stressed, we tend to blame God and everyone around us. Lord, don't you care? Kind of like Martha was working. First of all, if he didn't care, he wouldn't enter our home. Second, so, so we know that he cares for us. Martha was so work-focused, she only saw the exterior of Jesus and who she had to give to. So in Luke 10, 41, this is how Jesus responds to Martha. 10, 41, Jesus' response to her complaint was this, Martha, Martha, you are worried and troubled about many things. And so just from experience, I know when my name's repeated, <laughs> somebody's either trying to calm me down <laughs> or teach me something. <laughs> so Martha, Martha, you are worried and troubled about many things. And if we read on to the very next verse, 42, Jesus tells her that only one thing is needed. But one thing is needed, and Mary has chosen the good part, which will not be taken away from her. Mary was simply sitting at his feet. She was resting and receiving from her Savior. The lesson here is that there are two kinds of believers represented in Martha and Mary. Are you a Martha trying to give to God, trying to serve God, trying to pour to God? All these things are good. He never rebuked Martha for her service. He never corrected her for wanting to serve. He simply says, you are troubled. You are worried about many things. And here's the thing. You can serve without worrying. You can give without trouble in your heart. And to do this, you have to become a Mary in the lesson. Learning to rest and trust in God, which will number your days. So, do we want to know the secret of numbering our days? Psalms 90, 14. It's a secret of knowing and numbering our days and are not allowing a single day of our life to be put to waste. So in Psalms 90, 14, it says, O oh, satisfy us early with thy mercy, that we may rejoice and be glad all of our days. So the word mercy there is the Hebrew word hesed, which means God's grace. So God is telling us to be satisfied every day with his grace. When you are satisfied, that means you are content or pleased. God's mercies are new each morning, and his grace is enough. So we need to be content each day knowing that when we go forward, God is already there providing grace. Content means we're at rest. So Hebrews 4.1, I'm going to read out of the Amplified. Hebrews 4.1. Therefore, while the promise of entering his rest still remains and is freely offered today, let us fear in case any one of you may seem to come short of reaching it or think he has come too late. So God tells us, to fear that we don't enter into this rest. Many of us worry about many things and everything that God tells us not to be afraid of, we are. But the one thing God tells us to be afraid of, we aren't. He said fear that we don't enter his rest. So God told the children of Israel that he had to bring them into a land flowing with milk and honey. He wanted them in the promised land because it was a place flowing with abundance and provision. It was also a sure promise, a statement of what God will definitely do. Unfortunately, we are so focused on our problems instead of Jesus and his finished work on the cross that we cannot enter our promised land of rest. So to get back to what I started with, have you ever read the story of the 12 spies and asked yourself if you would side with Joshua and Caleb, the two spies that said, let's go immediately and 
take this land, or if you would agree with the other ten spies. The Bible says in Hebrews 3, 7 through 9, I'm not going to read all the verses, but it basically tells them, Today, if you hear his voice, do not harden your hearts as in rebellion like your fathers in the wilderness. So in other words, he's saying, do you believe your problems are bigger than what God is saying about your situation? Before your body is healed, before the money is in your bank account, before every problem in your life is resolved, will you believe that God has already delivered you according to his word and still walk and rest? God wants you to have the revelation that whatever you need him to do for you has already been done because Jesus has accomplished it all for you. And God is asking, in spite of the giants, would you go up and enter the promised land of my rest? Can you be rest conscious rather than giant conscious? Can you be like Mary and sit at his feet and just receive? That is where a continuous and steady flow of abundance will come from. A place of rest. And please don't misunderstand. I'm not projecting laziness or lackadaisical. I'm I am, however, projecting Jesus and his accomplishments for us because of the cross. A place of trusting in him above all else. Your land flowing with milk and honey. Jesus inhabits your land. He is your milk. He is your honey. He is all in all. All resources are in you because the Spirit is in you. So allow the Spirit to flow from you because you are blessed in the promised land and he wants you to be a blessing and share it with others. Amen. Amen. Yes, the Lord. So, Mike, I don't know if you'd like to come up. we got a little bit of time, and whoever wants to stay. I just felt like the Lord was like, at the end, let's just enter in. Enter into His presence, basically. We're already there. He's already in us. So, just rest our mindsets is what I, I feel like He's wanting us to do from our day, from our week. And just take a minute to meditate on His his goodness. So if we could maybe just play some worship music and just, if you guys can stay, please do. If not, I understand. Um, but I think we just need to recognize the promised land, the flowing, the milk and honey, and just soak in his presence of amazing grace. So I don't know. Yes. Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. Amen. Glory. Thank you, God. Yes. A few weeks ago, Nathan talked about how people misunderstand the scripture that said he's going to go to a place and there's many mansions. Mm -hmm. And that the word mansion means abode. Mm -hmm. And that he is the abode and we are his house. Yes. And that when the, when the promise was houses they did not build, He's talking about us. Yeah. We're the houses. Yes, the Lord. Amen. And all of the resources of the promised land, we didn't earn them. We didn't plant the seed. Right. We didn't nurture the seed. We didn't grow the right. We didn't grow the vineyards. You know, that's a, it's such a powerful lesson with the kids downstairs to think mm -hmm. about grapes that it takes two people to, to carry a stick. Right. Like, can you imagine if we take the grapes, you know, and we say, can you imagine it takes two people and they're bigger than... Right. That's how much more God has for us yes. that we can't even, even imagine. imagine. I know. And He is our rest. He is. Yep. He okay. is the rest. Glory. Thank you, Lord. And if anybody needs prayer, we, we, can, all, we can pray. We can all pray together.
Yes, sir.